Okay, I think this is recording now. Wait a second, I'm just going to make people... Yep, this is recording. So, where were we? Oh, uh, I would transform from a moment of veteran... Yeah. ...more veteran into a more global thing. For sure. Um, I would say up to 10 or 15 years ago that had wasn't my brain about the history of disability rights okay. and disability rights movement. Um, there were some pretty important research done and written about, but it didn't get a whole lot of attention. Okay. Um, the right uh, research wasn't that accessible. Right, it was written in a way that was, the front. It was written to, to uh, an academic audience or something like that. Um, I was a, uh, maybe in some, to some degree, but I was more mean accessible in terms of finding it. Okay. Knowing about it. Right. And even myself as a disabled person, I had to do a lot of work Just to, to figure out what my own history was. Right. As a disabled Canadian, how we came to have. Access accessible restaurants and uh, how we came to how I came to be able to be in a public school along with everyone else, which actually was brand new when I was in grade six. So before grade six, I was in segregated schooling. Right, right. And that was just because that's where disabled kids went for schooling. There was no question of issue in them. Suddenly, I was allowed to go to my regular school. Right. Yeah, well, of course, no one really talked much about how that came to happen. And again, most people thought, well, it just the benevolence of our government or right. schools. Yeah, let's just be nice and let these poor disabled kids in your school. Yeah. Because it will make for better society. Right. And you know, in that to fact, that only happened because of the, all this stuff, political struggles that disabled people waged. Right. To full pressure. On the government, on the schools, yeah. to basically say, look, we're equal citizens right. like everyone else. Yeah. Segregation is not equal. No. And we have the right to go to school that we want to go to. Yeah. So, um, uh, that slogan for the Can uh, Canadian Disability Rights Movement and probably the Global Disability Rights Movement was that we move from charity yeah. and needs to demands and rights. Right. So it was no longer seen as a charitable thing to 
allow a disabled pe person into the restaurant. Or allow a disabled person into the club or right, to sure. print a book and grill alongside a book and print. to go off and, and to move from something that, that started as as a, a reaction to the um, to, to veterans into something that it becomes international law. That's that's, that's a you know not all countries have signed up for it, but it's 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 fascinating uh, how, yeah. how many people have signed the, the International Convention for the Rights for Disabled People. Like, yeah. That's what it's called. Uh, um, well, yeah, yeah. Are you in convention for right yeah, I mean, it's, it's quite an impressive, trans, yeah. you know, transition um, in our society yeah. Yeah. into what is, because like, it would have been at the time that the UN was being formed, right around the Second World War, this would have been inconceivable, um, yeah. I think. Yeah. But. No, you're right. Yeah. Uh, we were. I, we were in, still in what's called it. Charitable model, which frames the approach to disability as an emergency. No, I am the approach to disability as a, a, a medical problem. Right. And be a problem of individuals. Right. So it's because I don't need in a wheelchair and can't manage care that right. we have to figure out how to do things so that I don't can have a okay time like the rest of us. Right. Once again, Alan is a trouble. Yeah. Alan is a trouble. So. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, when I was growing up, you know, I, I was in secondary school in grade six. Yeah. So, but the only disabled people I knew were in that secondary school. Right. And you know, when I went home at 3 p.m. to my I was to my neighborhood, I was the only disabled person around. Right. So, I think for me, I kind of fell into that mindset. Yeah, it's a problem of me, and I have to figure everything out for me. So, well, you know, things have to be done, especially for me. Right. And as a kid or even as an adult, you don't want to feel that way. You don't want to feel that, you know. Everyone needs to do something special for you. Yeah. So you so for the longest time I tried to uh, distance myself from anything to do with disability. Right, right. Do, do you think it's any different now for people, for kids growing up in terms of the, the, the knowledge, like the internet has done so much to try and allow people to come together and to bring people who have any kind of, of um, difference that is outside of the, the norm to be able to find each other and to communicate and to learn from each other and share. Has, has, has the internet been useful for, or do you think it will be useful for people growing up to, to have a, a greater sort of sense of, you know, it's not just me, it's not my problem, this is, this is, um, that there's a whole bunch of people like me and, you know, you think that, that will help? I, <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's 
about um, I was, I mean, there's the whole sort of uh, I was thinking about um, disabled versus differently abled or like those kinds of language stuff but but, or, but I think more more fascinating is one of, of, um, of piss on pity and and that line which I think did you have a t-shirt with that, with that at one point I remember that and I just say good and fun uh, British <laughs> right so can you, what, what can you tell me about, about what... Um, the idea is that people feel sorry for the people. People yeah. want to help them, want to you know, make sure we're comfortable, want to make sure that we feel part of the group or whatever, which sounds good on it. Surface, but if we come from a place of being silly for someone, being a, you need to help them to be part of the group. And that doesn't really make the black person feel. Yeah. Worthy or if you have that much self worth, right? Because again, the charity model it only includes someone because you feel sorry for them, right? So I pray that someone put some pity in bump just disabled people. Yeah, we don't want you charity, we yeah. don't want you to sorry for us. If you're only doing us because you feel sorry for us, then don't bother. Yeah. We don't want to be included in that way, and we got to just go off and do our own thing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And that's where Pretty good um, I have a few uh, blind friends who, who told me stories that, of, of, of sighted people coming up to them and helping them across the street, <laughs> even if they, without asking if they want to cross the street or where they're going or if they need assistance or anything like that. It's just, you know, it's, I think that's all part of that as well, that whole sort of sense of, 
I can do something. I can be a good person by helping this 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 blind person or this disabled person. I can I can be a good Samaritan and and do this good act and then go home to my family and say, oh, I helped somebody today. I was such a good person. And it's like, but without having that sort of sense of, you know, were you really helping somebody? Or were you doing this just to go off and support your own ego? Is this this something that, that you are? Yeah. And how much was that person involved in? The way you were helping them, right? If they wanted to go where you took them, yeah. And there were many interested people that really communicate with me other than saying, Oh, let me help you do that, right? Right, yeah. yeah. Uh, I was uh, people come up to me and say, can I pray for you? <laughs> and I look at them and go, why? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which takes people back. Right. Because people assume that all I want is to be able to walk. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's an interesting, like, that, that definitely is the assumption that, that most people have, that this is the, uh, the the most pressing issue in your life, and the thing you would want to have changed most, and, and yeah, 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 no. Yeah, uh, um, I uh, yeah, I think uh, dynamic is a bit different for people with invisible disabilities. Right. And, um, yeah, I think in some ways it's uh, easier for me because I don't really have to self-identify. For sure. People can see me but yeah, if someone's dyslexic, right, and to the point of not being able to access information for the print. Yeah. Print. People's automatic reaction at first is, what's wrong with you, right? Yeah. <laughs> didn't you go to school? Yeah. Didn't you go to read it? That's right. You must be pretty daft yeah. not to be able to read. Yeah. 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 And then it's reacted in that charity yeah. at all. Because people don't see you as disabled. Right. They see you as oh, dumb. Yeah. And why do I get you? Yeah. Which comes to another um, issue in history of disability between deserving and undeserving. So how do you expl explain that to me? Um, I come from the Elizabethan laws way back. Okay. Back when we were both a, little, a lot younger. In the 1400s, younger. back when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and there, um, people, disabled people, the only means to support was to obey him. Right. Um, but I guess there were so many people begging that Ingram put out a law <laughs> to determine who was actually allowed to beg? Right. And who was just begging because they were lazy and didn't want to work? Right. So that created the framing of who was deserving to be the table, right. deserving of a charity. Right. And who was just you know, trying to take the easy road. Right. People who had moral problems. Uh, and if you were morally, um, you, you, you 
couldn't work because you, you were not made of good moral fiber. Um, yeah. Versus those people who had a legitimate reason to go yeah. off into. Right. Uh, to, yeah. You only got one leg. Right, right. Yeah. yeah, well, you could still hop around. What's wrong with that? You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you can still carry bricks up to the top of that building. What the heck? And then when you couple that with the fact that 90% of the stupidity is invisible, that means that for most disabled people, they don't get charity, they get you know, anger and frustration. Yeah. And why, why can't you read them? If you just applied yourself well, a little bit more, you'd be able to. Yeah. Uh, why can't you? You walk to the grocery store and back. You right. know, you, you look fine to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. Um, so I think that we should probably stop this this discussion and and uh, go off and work on dinner. Um, but I wanted to see if you had any last things to say before we we we, we go off and stop for dinner. <laughs> um, I'm looking forward to dinner. Well, that is a wonderful <laughs> thing to say. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> Thanks again. <laughs>